Now to Africa and Middle East region, which delivered its usual reliable performance with steady production and well-contained costs. Another steady quarter for Lulagon Koto, with cash costs well-contained and all in sustaining costs impacted by additional stripping for the Yalea pit pushback. Positive results from ongoing brownfields exploration point to further life of mine extension opportunities. And as we indicated last quarter, we continue to engage with the government of Mali on their desire to increase their benefits from the mining industry while protecting our rights and the economic viability of the Lulo Goncoto complex going forward. In the north of the Lulo permit, drill results from the Baboto target have identified a large-scale well-endowed system with high-grade intercepts. This, along with other near-mine targets, augurs well for Lulo Goncoto to again replace the gold they mine this year. And um, across to the DRC, where Kabali picked up speed after a slow start to the year with waste stripping providing access to higher grade open pit ore. Meanwhile, next year's planned commissioning of its solar power and battery storage facility will complement the mine's three hydropower plants increasing the renewable component of its energy use to 85%. And in fact, for six months of the year, we'll have 100% renewable energy driving uh, our power delivery. As at Lulogon Koto, Brownfield's exploration continues to deliver further potential for growth with high-grade results from the Agbarabo, Rhino, Kumbakola targets pointing to a significant deposit within just four kilometers of the plant. The prolific KCD trend is also producing new opportunities for reserve additions. And therein lies what, we, you know, everyone sort of created a definition of tier one assets. But real tier one assets come with enormous upside opportunity, uh, as you see in Lulogon Cotto and at Kabali and, and significantly in Nevada. In Tanzania, North Mara and Bully and Hulu both increased production while driving down costs, and the resuscitation of these mines is one of our major success stories, as is the concept of formal benefit sharing partnerships with host countries, which we successfully pioneered with the Tanzanian government. The Lemoana copper mine in Zambia delivered a higher production at lower costs in line with the plan and is set for an even stronger second half of the year. The mine is also on the threshold of its super pit expansion, which will increase production to some 240,000 tonnes of copper and extend the operation's life by more than 30 years. First production from this project is expected in 2028. The Lamana Super Pit and Rikadik, together they will provide powerful support for Barrick's drive to grow our gold equivalent production by 30% during this decade. And it's worth reminding you that Rikadik will be both a gold and a copper mine designed to produce 400,000 tons of copper on an annual basis and 500,000 ounces of gold per year in phase two of its development. Add to that the ramp up of basically two new mines, Gold Rush and PV, to be followed by a potential brand new mine in Four Mile, of which Barrick owns 100% and which can utilize the existing Nevada gold mines infrastructure and processing facilities. Barrick has an unmatched growth portfolio that separates us from the industry with prospects of even more to come from our ongoing exploration initiatives. So this brings me to a subject I have been flagging for some time, and that is how undervalued Barrick shares are today. I wanted to take you through some research based on consensus net asset value of our assets. 
On this slide, we highlight two of our key businesses. On the left of the slide, you have Nevada Gold Mines, which is by far the best gold asset in the world's most mining-friendly jurisdiction. The right side shows our growing copper business is well on track to becoming world-class amongst peers, some of which have recently attracted international attention. Moving one step further, this table identifies the unrealized value embedded in barracks within barracks portfolio. Nevada gold mines on its own should command the industry's highest valuation. On that basis, this analysis conservatively assumes the price to NAV multiple equivalent to that of Agnico Eagle, although arguably NGM would be higher rated given its size and quality. The analysis applies a similarly conservative market multiple to our copper assets, in line with copper peers, although again I would note that the recent BHP Lundin transaction ascribed significantly higher multiples to those undeveloped copper assets in Argentina. Again, the analysis is based on the current analyst consensus NAVs, but we expect these NAVs to increase as we will be publishing updated feasibility studies on our two key growth projects at the end of the year. As you can see from the table, on the basis of the analysis, the value of just our interest in the Nevada gold mines and our copper portfolio alone exceeds our current market cap. In fact, according to the current market value of our shares, the rest of our business has a negative value of 1.2 billion. This includes our interest in three Tier 1 gold mines outside Nevada, the world-class Four Mile Project, other gold mines and development projects still in the pipeline, and our exploration team's unparalleled success in, covering, in uncovering new answers. In short, I would submit that when you buy Barrick today, you get a lot for free. We set out in 2019 to build a sustainably profitable gold and copper mining company focused on world-class assets. We did not have to buy them at a premium. They were embedded in the combined portfolio that we put together at market and just required identification, evaluation, development and delivery which is where we are today. On top of that, we have replaced all the ounces we have mined and repaired our balance sheet to be industry leading and capable of supporting our dividend policy and growth plans. Clearly, Barrick represents an investment opportunity unmatched in our sector.